All right, so starting out on um, what we see in nearby galaxies and how that compares to the very, very distant galaxies. Um, we're going to be centering our discussion around this Hubble ultra deep field image. So there are 10,000 galaxies in this image. Uh, this was gathered in a really interesting way. So the Hubble Space Telescope, I think it had some downtime in around 2003, 2004. It wasn't being used for other projects and I can't remember why. They pointed it directly at this um, seemingly bare patch of space. And then over about three weeks of exposure time and repeatedly taking images at the same place, this image emerges. And it's fascinating because, you know, it's a very small patch of the sky that was pretty dark. So that's why they pointed the telescope there. Um, the pre-class video mentions that they had looked at, you know, astronomers often look at very specific objects to study. But in this case, they just wanted to know, you know, what's out there in a place where it looks like no there's nothing. And actually, it turns out there's a heck of a lot um, all at different distances from us. So the oldest galaxy that we see here is 13.2 billion years old. Um, that's pretty close to the age of the universe, 13.8 billion years old. So some very, very old objects in this image. That makes it a really useful resource for learning about galaxy evolution. So um, in order to think about how to interpret the images of galaxies that we see in the deep field, we need to think about the concept of look back time. So look back time is simply the amount of time that has passed since the light was emitted by a galaxy until the time it takes for us to see it. So um, the idea is that we can measure the redshift of a, of a given galaxy based on its spectrum and use that to calculate its speed. Um, because of Hubble's law, we know that galaxies that are moving away from us at higher speeds are more distant. And then since we assume that the speed of light is constant, then we can calculate the time that it took for that light to reach us, assuming that the galaxy is at the distance set by Hubble's law and that the light has traveled at the speed of light ever since it left that galaxy. So that's the basic idea. It means that look back time is connected to redshift. And so both of these terms, redshift and look back time, are sometimes used somewhat simultaneously by astronomers. Okay, so here's a table that we looked at before, right? Um, the redshift Z and the fraction of a speed of light that an object with that fraction with that redshift must be moving, right? So this is the connection between redshift and speed. And now we can add some columns to this table. We're going to add the distance and the look back time. Um, and you can, you know, in, in units of millions of light years, this is um, somewhat convenient because then we can see how the distance in millions of light years compares to the look back time in millions of years. So you're going to do this in your activity, so I won't guide you through it now. But I do want to call your attention to how, how long this table goes to, right? Um, if we go to a redshift of infinity, then the look back time for that redshift is 13,800 million years. And that just happens to be the age of the universe, 13.8 billion years. So it's by calculating the look back time associated with a given redshift that we find the age of the universe. In order to make these calculations the right way, you need to use either a relativistic version of the Doppler shift equation or even better than that, you have to use models that have other parameters that go into them. So we're not gonna get into the details of that at all, um, but that's why we use uh, tables like this uh, to find look back time. Let's see, some of these objects, especially the ones that have a look back time very, very close to the age of the universe, they're probably no longer existing in the same form as they used to be, right? And that's the whole idea behind studying galaxy evolution is that we assume that we can basically look back in time towards some of the oldest galaxies and that's a snapshot of what they were like in their infancy. Then we can look at medium distances and see sort of, okay, this is what galaxies have looked like after they've had some time to evolve and interact with each other. And then if we look at our, the very nearby galaxies to us, then we see, okay, this is what, you know, galaxies look like in our, in our modern age. And of course, galaxies will continue to evolve over time, 
after today, right? Nothing is stopping the process. Um, but this is what we have. And it's a really cool um, idea that you can look back in time by looking back in distance and also super useful. Otherwise we would never be able to piece together this puzzle. Okay, so with that idea in mind that we're gonna use look back time to piece together this picture of uh, galaxies evolution and in doing so the universe's evolution. I'm gonna jump straight into today's activity. <laughs> 